What's going on, Paisanos? V here. Coming at you, well, with another market watch today. Before I begin, I got to my website, YJOPaisano.com. It is an amazing website where you can get a lot of amazing custom feel centers. A lot of them have the feel of a collector's rare. They have that little groove on them, and they all look absolutely gorgeous. I mean, we have Live Twin Splite over here. You're never going to see this feel center from Konami. Maybe you will one day, but not to this quality. This is absolutely gorgeous. Obviously, we have a ton of extras of field centers. We have a Magnifica. Uh, we also have Macaulay's. Does it show Macaulay's? No, it doesn't show Macaulay's. Well, we have Macaulay's and Magnifica. Absolutely gorgeous field centers. Any order over $25 gets free shipping. Orders under $25 is 3 bucks for shipping. Everything is shipped with tracking. I try to get everything out as soon as possible. You order today before 4 p.m., it's going to get out today. Your shipping will more than likely be updated today. Now, I don't have a lot of these tokens left, and it's probably going to be a long while before you see a lot of these field centers and tokens. There's a lot of new product coming out, and hopefully in a couple of weeks, I'll be able to have that and show that new product to you. With that said, if you still want to get yourself an adventure token, I have, I think, a couple of these left. Uh, this adventure token, we, we have some of these left as well. These are going super fast. Everyone's picking them up, obviously, because everyone's playing adventures. So if you do want to get your adventure tokens, make sure to get them now, because when they're sold out, they're pretty much gone. Another thing I, I offered recently was the NFC, uh, smart NFC add-ons. These go in the back of your field centers. Uh, these things allow you to program your phone. I did a video on it recently. Well, I'm sold out today. Tomorrow, I will have more in. So if you do want to get more, you can order that more. Now, it's not economical for me just to sell one of these to you. I mean, you have to buy these for 5 bucks and pay for shipping. So if you do want to buy these smart NFC add-ons, make sure to check the rest of the website out. Add some warp. And once again, if it's over $25, you do get the opportunity to get it with free shipping. So please make sure check that out once again it's smart fc add-on it's a black sticker it goes right in the back of your field center and it's going to allow you to program that field center to your phone or smartphone and it's going to allow you to do a lot of cool things in my video i showed you you can open up the yugioh noran app you can open up calculator for my old school yugioh players you can do a lot with it these things are absolutely really cool all right also one more thing i want to say uh once i get some more nfc's uh in probably by this saturday tomorrow uh, what's gonna happen is you're gonna have an you're gonna have a tab over here. Now you can go ahead and add the cart. You don't have to buy this, but it is an option. If you want to get the smart NFC add-on, you're gonna do do that. The price automatically updates. You hit add the cart. If you don't want to do that, no big deal. You can still hit add the cart. The website will still say no big deal, no problem. Twenty bucks, and then you'll still pay the three shipping. So it's up to you, whatever you want to do it. But if you want to do it this way, definitely uh, make sure to add it in. Uh, as far as the stickers, uh, when with these smart NFC add-ons, I might just put the sticker automatically in the back of the card. I might mail the sticker, uh, the NFC, uh, a programmable NFC sticker with it. I still don't know 100% what to do with that yet, but uh, yeah, definitely go ahead and check that out. These things are really, really cool, and it gives you the opportunity to program your your, your fuel center to your phone, a fuel center of your choice if you go on YGOPaisano.com. All right. <sighs> I just want to go over all that because I think it's really important and really cool. The ability to add programming on field centers to a phone is super awesome. I think it's the next level for every single Yu-Gi-Oh player. I think this is about to become the norm for every single Yu-Gi-Oh player. And I kind of want to get ahead of it by offering it to you guys on my website. So I'm sorry I'm really nerdy and get really giddy about that. All right. Let's talk about the Yu-Gi-Oh market. This is an absolutely insane market. I don't like to pat myself on the back too much because, you know, you don't want to break your neck trying to give yourself a hand job. But what I want to say is I think what's really cool is that we've been calling a lot of cards correctly. And in this video, we're going to go over a couple of those cards that we called correctly. In fact, to be honest with you, there are a lot of cards still that we have not called correctly yet. I always say yet because I do think these cards will rise in value. In fact, I'm going to be pointing about that in this market watch. This is a really interesting market watch because throughout the week, maybe a couple of weeks, we pointed at a bunch of cards. And normally today on Friday, we're going to go and say, hey, listen, we did it right here. We did it right here. And maybe we didn't do it so right here. One thing I'll talk about, though, is Magician Soul. Magician Soul right now, a legendary duelist, is still on pre-sale from what I understand, and they're currently roughly around $15. Now, these are the ultra-rare copies. Remember, Magician Soul's first row dial is an ultra-rare, then as a secret rare, and now it's getting reprinted as an ultra-rare. I personally like the blue and the red, but if you want a regular ultra-rare, they do have that there for you as well. With that said, obviously, a lot of Yu-Gi-Oh! players are going to want to start picking Magician Souls. If that's the case, obviously, the price of Illusion of Chaos might start increasing. Now, will this happen immediately? No. 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 What we're going to see, be seeing is, now that Nationals is for the most part done and there's no Worlds, the next big Yu-Gi-Oh! event, I believe Regionals or YCS is coming up soon for a lot of Yu-Gi-Oh! players, we're going to look at those decks, and then we're going to be able to go, okay, now Magician Souls is needed or it is not needed. In fact, comment down below. Let me know. Are you going to be using it? In fact, more importantly, 
Are you going to be using it in Power of the Elements? Will it be used in Splites? Will it be used in Tier Elements? Will it be used in the other decks that might survive? Well, Splites and Tier Elements. Let me know in the comments down below. It's actually a really interesting question to ask. Um, we do have Dark Magicians here being roughly around 1085 for a Secret Rare. Get wrecked, anyone who bought Ultra Rares. Secret Rare Dark Magicians. This is why Legendary Duels is really hard to speculate as far as, as, far as like the value. Because Konami just turns around and goes, Oh, that is a lot of money. All right, we'll see you in like nine months. Nine months later. Okay, reprint. That thing that was a lot of money is not worthless. Hopefully, you don't have a binder for them because you just got boned hard. Looking at the rest of these cards, obviously, cards like Dark Magician, Girl, being roughly around five dollars. I do think this card is going to be going lower in value, but it's not going to stay low. Once again, it's an Ultra Rare, Legendary Duelist. I know you see the other colors, see Dark Magician Girl. You're going V. There's other Dark Magician Girls. What are you talking about? I get that. But I'm not sure if you know this or not, but Dark Vision Girl is an old school waifu. It was probably one of the first waifus. So I expect this card's price to go low with the first release of Legendary Duelist Season 3 box. And then when Legendary Duelist Season 4 box is available and Season 3 is out of print, that goes up in value, more than likely. Uh, listen, look at the rest of the cards. I do like the I do like looking at Sangon over here. Uh, Sangon Ultra Rare was always a money card. I mean, you can click on Sangon and... Besides the Legend of Duelist one, which is like three bucks, the Ultra Rare Sangon at Turtle Pack Booster Six is thirty-two dollars. Obviously, um, you know, will Sangon Legend of Duelist Three be at this price point? Probably not. Uh, will it drive the price of Ultra Rare Sangon down? Probably. I mean, look, you go. We see. You can see over here. The market price is fifty-one dollars. The price point is thirty-two. Super Rare Sangon is sitting there going, "Hey, it feels good to be a Super Rare Sangon." Ultra Rare Sangon holders, it does hurt. I own one of each of these. It kind of hurts. Uh, listen, looking at, uh, you know, with power to elements, Tillaments, um, Splites, I do think Exorcist is going to be a house to deal with. I think for Splite players particularly, ex Tillament players maybe, depending on how you play. Splite players, this is now the bane of your existence. Here's the question, though. Will Exorcist players actually rise up and start playing this deck at big events? I mean, let's be honest. Nobody's playing this deck, especially at big events. I mean, you might go, wait a minute, V. You, 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 might, we have, we might have one of these guys at locals. Wait a minute, V. I'm playing this deck. I'm so good. X three all the time. I'm talking about players that are actually like top events, okay? And not like we just squeaked in top sixty four, top thirty two. I came in thirty second place. God is good. No. I'm talking about actually like dominating, showing that your deck is like one of the top decks. And that's the question that I want to know what Exorcist is. Do you think it's going to happen? Me personally, I do think it can happen. I do think if we get enough Yu-Gi-Oh plays behind an event, it can. Hey, listen, you go to Yu-Gi-Oh regionals, everyone's playing, I don't know, let's say uh, pure scraps, pure scraps, and you walk in there with splites, mathematically, pure scraps dominate that event, okay? Pure Cloudians dominate that event. Oh, one spite player. Who cares if he won the event? 31 31 Cloudian players, and I don't know if that's going to be a situation with Exorcists, or is it going to be something that they're just going to come out of nowhere and go, no, 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 uh, every Spike player, lick the boot, okay, every single Spike player, Tim with, you know, hit or miss, Spike players though, straight smacked, yeah, no, no, yeah, that's what we do. I, I just don't want, I don't know. I really don't know, and I'd love to know your what you guys think in the comments down below. As far as valuations, is it really worth it getting high ready Exorcisters? Oh, that's really hard. I mean, it does look nice with the regional mat, even though the regional deck box is pink. Thanks, Konami. Change that color. But is it worth it with some of the prices? Well, for me, it's hit or miss. I mean, let's go over the prices. So, Macaulay's CR is at 84, uh, but you can get a Macaulay's for 14. So do you care about that? For one CR, you get your place in Macaus. You need a place up, by the way. For Magnifica, it's four, I believe. It's supposed to be nine. Is it? What? Is it four or nine? What? Uh, okay, so that's that's an idiot price. Um, so it's roughly around eight to nine dollars. Okay, cool, cool, cool. So it's nine for Magnifica. Starlight Rare is two fifty. I feel like you get the Starlight Rare at the end if you do everything else. All right. Sophia is forty seven. Okay. Or 15. So, once again, for one CR, you get three Sophias if you want to. Uh, Pax is 60, and Ultra Pax is 20. Now, this is where it gets kind of weird because for me, I better get the CR if I was to play Exorcist. I don't even own Pax. I have everything else minus Pax. I think I have like one Magnifico off. But is it is it worth it? That's what I want to know. Comment down below. All right. Fun the Reason is my baby. And when I mean my baby, it, 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 it's Baby Hitler. Like, I love Flunderies. <laughs> but even though Baby Hitler's mom knew that this was one day going to be a problem for everybody, she still fed it. <laughs> 
And I do think that this deck is so toxic, so mean. But then again, listen, if you're playing Flunderies, and, and maybe it's because I'm recently playing Flunderies and it's like a virus into my mind, I know, whatever. Okay, whatever. If you're playing Flunderies and you complain are upset about you playing Flunderies, find me. And I beg you to find me an honorable Despia player. Oh, I play Despia's honorably. Just summon an attack. Really? You don't have crazy fusion abilities? Crazy fusion abilities. Crazy fusion effects. You only trying to kill me by turn two minimal? What? Okay. Find me a punk synchron player. But honorably, right? There's no honor in Yu-Gi-Oh. You get wins or you get losses. I don't care what you have to play. Even though I don't like Mystic Mime and I want to punch that card and every time Konami goes, huh, maybe that is a problem. No, it's a problem. Create a balance already. Even though that's an issue, at the end of the day, Yu-Gi-Oh! is about winning and losing. What are you doing? Are you trying to be honorable? Honorable Yu-Gi-Oh! players? I'm an honorable Cloudion player. Cool. Thanks for the donating $5 every week and doing nothing other than sitting around getting smoked by everybody and being a butt of everyone's jokes. Why, of course, you go to the bathroom and they're outside smoking a cigarette laughing at you. You play to win. That's it. If you want to play to have fun, no big deal. Yu-Gi-Oh! Casual is a great game. But the second you play competitive Yu-Gi-Oh!, expect to play against one of these players. Now, with that said, will Thunder Beast survive throughout t elements and Splites? Me, personally... I do think we're going to see Flutterbees evolve. And I do think we're going to see Flutterbees change to play against both t Limit and Splites. Why? Well, let's be honest. This deck creates a board a board immediately that the, the opponent has to answer. You just, you just go M-Pen, you go Barrier Statue. This deck costs around 100 bucks. It's dirt cheap. Yes, yes, you need Pot of Prosperity. But Pot of Prosperity is going to get reprinted soon in Megaton, number one. Number two, you go in Pot of Extravagance. Gee, it's pretty hard to buy, right? Oh, wait a minute. It got reprinted as a common free deck. Free tier one deck out the box. That's what this deck is to me. Now, once again, I do think when it evolves, obviously more than money is going to have to be put into this deck in order to evolve it to the point where it could compete against t Limits, it could compete against Blights, but I do think Flunderies can do that. And in fact, if you had to say right now, V, what's your favorite deck in the game? It's Branded. <laughs> I love Branded Despias. It's my favorite deck in the game right now, no doubt. Right in, in the current competitive meta, I mean, obviously, all time at Shadows get wrecked everybody. Like, sorry, Branded players, like, Shadows are infinitely better, way cooler looking. But even though I like Branded, even though I have a Branded almost max rarity, I still look at Funderies as a deck I feel like is the best deck right now because it's going to survive. If you know you can play, wants to be competitive, you play Funderies. You get dubs with Funderies. And then when Splice and Timmits come out, you just continue doing what you've been doing. Oh, you can't play uh, uh, you can't play Mystic Mime? Cool. We have Dark Rule no more. You go second with Flunderies. Have fun with that. Like, it's still really good. Anyway, um, so we talked about Unending Nightmare the other day, and I love this card. I love Unending Nightmare. So many floodgates, especially after the recent nationals, everyone's gonna be like, ooh, time to play floodgates. Cool. Unending Nightmare says hi to everybody. No cosmic cyclone. We don't need a set we're not worried about playing against uh what is it? Uh, Draco's that Cosmic Cyclone's an issue anymore. Let's be honest. You have Onany Nightmare because you're going to pop your opponent's face up spell slash trap cards per chain. Meaning, if you activate something, I activate Onany Nightmare's effect if it's face up on the field already. I'm not activating that Nightmare. That's Chain Link 1. Guess what? Activate. Listen, I think Onany Nightmare is a phenomenal card. It's great against every floodgate in the game. Summer Limit, Anti Spell Fragrance, Goes the Match, Rario Warlords, anything. Hell, you could chain this card to when your opponent activates a. Uh, 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 a uh, uh, royal, uh, royal decree. A girl trash can be activated. Let's resolve this backwards. On any number with chain link two, blast your royal decree. Nice try, kid. Like on any number is such a good card, and I really don't think Yu-Gi-Oh players realize it. Up until I mentioned it the other day. In fact, Unending Nightmare at a maximum crisis right now, old set by the way, is currently almost at five dollars with shipping per copy. I should have waited. Should have told my buddies at locals. I should have spread the word around before I did this video. Whatever. Uh, I did say in the video I do own a playset of of, uh, of this car, and I really do in English. I also said you could get Unending Nightmare for roughly around two bucks with dollar shipping in Italian first edition. I bought six of these, so. I don't need six. <laughs> I might sell the three. I don't know what I'm going to do, but uh, man, this card looks good. Basically, what I'm trying to say is anyone at your locust thinks they're going to be beating everybody over running floodgates, you just live on any nightmare over them. Not only that, but this card's really good against Mystic Mime. You got that one Yu-Gi-Oh player that plays Mystic Mime, your locust game, he thinks he's so good at Yu-Gi-Oh because he plays one field spell that isn't, isn't taken care of at the moment. Cool. Flip this card. Problem solved. Have a good day. And you know what he'll say? They should ban on any nightmare. 
And then you tell him, go shower, because he probably smells. All right. Reinforcement Army is another phenomenal card. I think a lot of Yu-Gi-Oh players are forgetting about the fact that Reinfor Reinforcement Army has a bunch of print things means nothing. The fact that it has its highest rarity, which is currently CR, will it ever come out as the ultimate rare? Probably not. It's limited. Let's be real. Will it ever come out as a Starlight rare? Waste of a slot. Will it come out as a CR? Yes, and it is right here as a CR. King's Court version of Reinforcement Army right now is roughly around ninety-six bucks. In fact, after that one's gone, it's roughly around ninety-eight dollars, near a hundred dollars. The reason I'm pointing this out is because a lot of Yu-Gi-Oh players don't know the fact that this card can rise in value. It's also it's a good card that also sees playing GOAT and also in a few Yu-Gi-Oh formats. And I think we can all come to the agreement if you play this game long enough that Warriors will always be getting support in the game in Yu-Gi-Oh in so much way, shape, or form. With that said, Reinforcement Army CR will probably be your longest lasting high rarity card that's not going to maintain a stable value. This is, this is all an illusion. This card goes higher in value, no doubt in my mind. Divine Night Heroes is another card Yu-Gi-Oh! players are slowly starting to gravitate towards. The price is getting kind of high, but there's a chance it could get reprinted in the Mega Tin, and that's why the price isn't like $100. Current price points of this card is roughly around $58. If you need it, cool. If you don't need it, I would wait. Seriously. I would seriously 100% wait. I know you want to play Teal Mints, but you don't need to buy Divine Night Heroes. There are other options. If you want to see those options, make sure to check out my Teal Mint video. It's a great video. Alright. Pot of Pipe Spirit Star Rare is on sale. At a low, low price of roughly around five hundred and thirty-nine dollars. <throat> Friend prices. Listen, Pot of Prosperity right now, Starlight Rare, a Blazing Vortex is a phenomenal card, and obviously it's a little bit too rich for a lot of you can play as Blood. I get it. With that said, Pot of Prosperity Secret Rare, it's been going down in value. It's also insanely expensive, almost there, one hundred and five dollars a copy. Once again, friend prices. Too rich for your blood. I get it. There's a good chance Prada Prosperity, if not guaranteed, Prada Prosperity is going to get a reprint out of the Mega Tins. They do come on a couple of months, Konami pushes things back because of Virus of Unknown Origin, but ultimately, this will also more than likely be getting a reprint. With that said, do you buy cigarettes now? Well, it's hard to say. And if someone's buying a cigarette pot of, pot of Prosperity or a Starlight Rare, I kind of understand. Starlight Rare, I understand a lot more. You gotta flex, you have to flex. If you don't flex, you're not playing Yu-Gi-Oh correctly. If, if, if you have adult money, we get adult money, you flex redundant. Like, it doesn't matter. You, you just, everything's max rarity. You get the best of the best. You get your gorgeous Imperium Duels deck box. This is on sale today, by the way. You might have to go over to Imperium Duels' website. Check it out. Promo code Paisano10. I know it's an ad I'm throwing in here last second, but I really, 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 really like this deck box. Full screen mode, you got it. Oh, it's not doing it. Okay, never mind. You don't get full screen mode. But this is Imperium Duels deck box, ImperiumDuels.com. Links down below. Once again, 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. This will be available to sell. This is probably going to sell out. So uh, good luck to those that did order that. That thing's amazing. All right. With that said, I do think Possible Spirits is a card that's going to see play in a lot of decks, including Splites and Tier Limits. Could you play it without it? Sure. You can also drive your car in the rims. It doesn't mean you're going to be racing anytime soon, but you could do it. And I do think Possible Spirits might be a needed car soon, as much as expensive as it is. Pot of Strive against CR is a great card for Yu-Gi-Oh players, and more than likely might be a great alternative for some of Yu-Gi-Oh players. I'm looking at you, Flannery players. Always looking at you. Pot of Strive against used to be not a card used in Flunderies. And now it kind of is. Looking at Yu-Gi-Oh! National decks, we're seeing, yes, Prosperities. We are seeing Dualities, which is dirt cheap. And we are seeing Pot of Extravagance. Now, Pot of Extravagance got a common reprint. Good for you. But it also has a high revenue version. Not Secret Rare, but Collector's Rare. That's really not been doing much in the market. Looking at the current price point of this card, it's roughly around $97. A copy for Unlimited. And if you want to get a first edition version of this card, uh, CR. The first edition version of this card, what, Portuguese? What? Ugh. Uh, is roughly around 140 bucks. Once again, it's not bad, but it's the highest rarity version of do uh, Pot of Extravagance. Will it get an ultimate rare? Well, let's see. Pot of Avarice has an ultimate rare. Pot of Zyze has an ultimate rare. Um, Pot of Greed has an ultimate rare. So, I, if I was a gambling man, Pot of Duality has an ultimate rare. I would say yes. The problem is when. All right. Up next, oh, don't look at that. Up next, <laughs> Florida Alabas. You know what really makes me co confused, but I get it because Florida Alabas Secret Rare looks so goddamn good. Florida Alabas out of Rise of Duel's Secret Rare should have really tanked in value. I mean, think about it. It has Ultra Rare. The Secret Rare should be worthless, right? 
Well, no, the current price point of the Secret Rare is $19. And I own the Secret Rare, and it looks absolutely gorgeous. I also own the Ultimate Rare, only one, uh, but it looks absolutely beautiful as well. It's it's hard to choose. Blonde and Brunette, why can't I have both, says the Yu-Gi-Oh! player playing branded. And you're right, you deserve both. By the way, I do think brands can be one of those decks that will be surviving in Splite Tierment or Power of the Elements format. I think the deck's insanely good still. And to be honest with you, I might start playing that deck again. I have a lot of decks I'm playing. Check me out on Twitch TV, Why Joe Paisano. All right, uh, listen. I do think uh, that Fortnite Albaz Ultimate Rare is kind of peaking at its price point. If you look at a market three months out, you can see it do this weird trend. If you look at a month, though, you can see it's do, doing this weird trend where it keeps... It's, it's a stairs trend where it's going down, tries to stabilize, doesn't do it, goes down, tries to stabilize, doesn't do it, goes down, tries... It does it over and over again. Eventually, at one point, it stabilizes for a very short amount of time. And we see this statistically happening with Ultimate Rares out of OTS packs that do see some level of, me uh, some level of meta play. With that said... Fauna Albaz Ultra Rare is doing the same exact thing. The question is, when's it going to stabilize? Me, personally, I think the floor for this card at 50, 45 bucks is the lowest. And I think we kind of hit that already. So I do see this card starting to slowly rise in value. Now, how many do you need? I don't know, to be honest with you. I have two secrets and Ultra Rare. I want three of each, but that's just me being greedy. What do you think? Comment down below and let me know. So, on the other the other day, I mentioned the wrong effect for Herald of Purple Light and Herald of Green Light. One person commented about it, but also said, hey, listen, we get it. These cards came out of Enemy Adjustments originally, debuting as Ultimate Rares. There's a good chance no one's going to remember these cards. Let's be honest with you. Herald of Orange Light's main bay, these are side tricks on their best day. With that said, Herald of Purple Light negates a trap card, whereas Herald of Green Light negates a magic card. Now, are these cards bad? No. Not, they're so good, to be honest with you. I actually recently bought a place out of each. Costs a lot of money, yes, but you lock down the cards you want to get to have potential in the game. That's what investing in the market is, even though I also invest in crypto, which is infinitely better, but whatever. I like my Yu-Gi-Oh. All right. Herald of Purple Light right now, Ultimate Rare at Enemy of Justice. Looks like a tanked in value, right? Uh, kind of, not really, sort of. All right. So if you want a first edition version of this card, there's one over here for $16. Then it starts hitting $20. This card price point can be bought out so fast, you blink, it can be bought out. Now, looking at over at Herald of Green Light, once again, a first gen version of this card, well, name it and light you played, uh, we're gonna look at that. It's roughly around $23. I'm telling you right now, this is what I personally did because I don't wanna miss this boat. In the OCD, we're seeing sporadic play. I don't know if it's Herald of Green or Purple. I forgot which one it is. I'm, I'm too lazy. I'd rather have them both anyway, so I bought them both. I bought a place at each, by the way. Three. Um, we know this is a tech choice for the OCG. And here in the States, if it's a tech choice in a TCG, we buy it out crazily. If that card has an option, I'm seeing play. How many times have you seen it? Where everyone's like, wait, there's a small chance of a chance of a chance of a chance of a chance that card sees play? Maybe in the side deck at one? I'll take 20. That happens all the time in this game, especially in America, but usually in TCG as a whole, too. They follow up by it pretty hard. With that said, uh, I don't want to take any chances. I don't want to miss the boat. I bought Ulti Hero to Green Light. I bought Ulti Hero to Purple Light because I really do think these cards are great. And I think in time, these cards will see play. Like its sister, Hero to Orange Light, which I only own two of, unfortunately. But look at this chart in the past three months. The card bottom out to $56, and I really wish I got my third one, didn't. Uh, but look at the card right now. It's roughly around almost there, 150 bucks. Unless you want to get this foreign one, which is 10 bucks cheaper. It also sells it for cheaper as well, for foreign or max rarity cards. All right, so Herod of Orange Light, is it worth it? Well, you kind of need it. Now, you don't need an Ultra Rare, I'll be honest with you. And same with the Herod of Green Light and Herod of Purple Light. They do have low rates, which are cheaper. Herod of Orange Light is a little bit different. The cheapest version I found was in Structure Deck Wave of Light. And the Structure Deck Wave of Light version of this card is, I mean, friend prices. We're talking, come on, give me a deal. 850 for a comment. Friend prices. I've been slowly saving this up. I've been cracking Turtle Pack Booster 7 on my OTS locals. because they've been handing them out, so I've been saving them to the side. Um, listen, $7. Hey, that's cheaper. Hey, not bad. I mean, it does the job. That's what you need, right? It's going to hurt if three of these become mandatory. Because I do have two ultis. And, and if, you ever, ever, if you ever had like two ultis or something, and like a low rate or something, it eats at you. It eats at you so badly. And I feel like Orange Light is going to do that. I don't know much about splites as far as meta play. Only I know is splites are insane. It's like saying, I don't know about thunder, but if I stay outside with a metal pole, I'm going to learn what thunder does. And I think when, once the power elements come out, we're all going to be out there with our pole 
if we don't know what the spikes fully do. And I'm still learning, to be honest with you. With that said, why is recycling batteries not bought out? Don't get me wrong, it's a common card. Uh, all throughout. The last printing came on Astro Pack 2, Battle Pack Monster 3, uh, Battle Pack 3 Monster League, originally debuted in the Duelist Genesis. This card says, if anyone doesn't know, uh, you can go ahead and uh, target two Thunder type monsters with 300 to 1500 or less attack in your graveyard and into your hand. Why is this card not see? Am I wrong? I mean, I bought three of these no matter what, so I don't care. It cost me like two bucks for three recycling batteries. It was the freest buy I've ever done in my life. I don't know if this card's going to see play. The last time this card actually did see play, a little fun fact, was in Watts. Anyone remember Watts? Anyone? I used to love Watts. Do the Watt Lock, Watt Hop. Anyway, this card's really awesome. And I like this card. And to be honest with you, I don't know why Watts is, but I don't know if I have this card still lying around. But now I do because I bought like three of these. I think three or six of these. I'm telling you right now, this card's not a bad buy. Dirt cheap. Why not? Who cares? It has three printings. The card, last printing of this card was done forever ago. There's no reprint in sight. So I personally bought my three. Uh, let me know if that is used for spikes. All right. Deck Devastation Virus at Legend Collection Kyber was starting to go down in value. You can actually see it here on the chart, which I love. Can we see the past month? Yeah, you can see it in the chart, which I love it. It started, it started to go down in value for the ultra version of Deck Devi uh, Virus at Legend Collection Kaiba. Right now, the price is $7. After that one's gone, it's roughly around $9. Italian versions were $6. Let's go. Um, this card's going to be going up higher in value. This card's insane. Uh, if you want to be splites, this is one of the ways you could be splites. You just need a Dark Monster. In fact, here, let me show you the actual effect. Should be one Dark Monster with 2,000 or more attack. Check your opponent's hand. All monsters they control and all cards they draw until the end of their third turn after this card's activation. And the shortest monsters with 1,500 or less attack. Ouch, says every single spike player. Listen, all they control, their hand. That's pretty painful. That's, that's almost, in my opinion, if you're playing, let's say, I don't know, a dark deck. I know there's not many of those. Why well, we have branded tier limits. I, I mean, once again... They're all over the place. We don't know if they exist. Allegedly, Brandon monsters. I've been told, I don't can't verify this, are mostly dark monsters that you can use with deck devastation virus. I know, I know. I can't confirm this though. Take it out what you hear. With that said, this card's really good. Like insanely good. Activate against splites, look at the splite player and say, shh, shh. It's, it's gonna be alright. And then just butcher them next turn. Now, if you're a splite player, you have the option to play some hand traps. Maybe you don't. I don't know. Maybe there's a way you can stop this card. I don't know. Uh, there is an old school Yu-Gi-Oh card that you can use that might help you out. And if you guys know it, comment it down below. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna spoil. I'm not, I won't spoil it. But it is a cool card. You can stop this. I know this market went a little bit longer. I'm sorry. I really wanted to go over the NFC because I think this is the next level for every single Yu-Gi-Oh player playing this game right now. Obviously, I want to point out two tokens that are gonna be sold out. And once you sold out for next month, I'm gonna hear V. You're getting many more of those tokens. Get them right now. They're available. I'll wait till they're not. Uh, and of course, I want to talk about some amazing field centers available at YGOPizano.com as well as Imperium. Those gorgeous. I mean, absolutely stunning. Like I said, check this out. 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. This will sell out more than likely. This is an amazing Imperial Duelist double deck box. Look at that. Look at that. Absolutely gorgeous. And what I did is this is me, this is me being a nerd. This is an Imperial Duelist's Pegasus sleeves and a bunch of dice. You like look how clean that is. You go to regionals. You have been to regionals and you don't have all the sleeves or you have, you have a different deck box. No, 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 no. You're Gooch all, all over the place. You got your dice over here for days and you got extra extra thing of sleeves. Once again, these Imperial Duelist Pegasus sleeves. Check them out as well. Uh, I've been using a lot of them. I have a ton over to the side. I actually went and bought a ton of those because I like them a lot. It feels nice and smooth. And uh, yeah, anyway, pause. I appreciate, really appreciate you guys watching my video. It's your boy V and you boy Lottos. You boy Lottos have a great day.